Hey Luke, what do you know about the Nightblade? Uh, it's a basic card in Hearthstone. It costs five mana, I think. It's a four-four with a battle cry that deals three damage to an enemy hero. It's a pretty decent card. Uh, I actually I meant that case that's on the table there. Oh. I guess I can review that. Cooler Master V Series Semi Modular Power Supplies feature 80 plus gold efficiency and their gold guarantee 5 year warranty. Click now to learn more. Packaging wise, I know Linus would be proud. The packaging material in this case is a fantastic soft foam, but that's boring, so let's move on. Most of the front of the case is a brushed metal with diamond cut edges finish which is only interrupted by a gaming series case badge, a small MSI logo on the bottom, and a slot loading optical drive on the left hand side. Just above that we see the front I.O. which includes two each of USB 2.0 and 3.0 ports, along with audio jacks, an OC switch, a power button, a wireless signal LED, and a storage LED. Down on the bottom of the front panel we see some ventilation holes accented by an abuse ready carrying handle. Seriously, that thing is pretty beast. Its thick metal construction makes me pretty confident that it won't give way no matter how much I resemble an ogre. And if you're a hand model who's scared of picking up something that is possibly made of metal, they also include a soft handle cover. While the handle cover may be a nice addition, I'm not sure I would use it personally, as I think it looks much better without, and the standard metal handle actually does come with a nice slip resistant rubber pad on the bottom by default. The top, bottom, and side panels all feature ventilation holes, with the bottom panel including an externally removable filter, which due to the upwards angle provided by the carrying handle, is able to be removed, cleaned, and replaced without picking up the case, which in my opinion is pretty damn cool. The left side panel also includes a silhouette of the MSI Gaming Series Dragon just to the right of the ventilation holes, which fits the aggressive styling of this case. Once we get to the back, you'll notice there's a power plug at the top which has been extended there from the 600 watt 80 plus gold power supply which is mounted vertically in the front of the case. For motherboard I.O. we have a standard setup of audio jacks, four each USB 2.0 and 3.0 ports, two HDMI ports, a display port, a SPDIF digital audio out, two A SATA ports, a PS2 port, an ethernet jack, and dual wireless antennas. Then we get to the screws on the back, which left me a little bit confused, to be honest. For the backside panel, they've opted to go with standard run-of-the-mill screws. I would have liked to see at least thumb screws here. And then for the top and bottom panels, they went with thumb screws, but they don't have anywhere to undo it with an actual screwdriver which is kind of odd. Luckily they don't come pre-installed too brutally and can be easily taken off by hand. These screws also have a double function by acting as a stand for when you want to put the case down after carrying it, if you want to put it down vertically because that's how it hangs off your hand, but you have to make sure that nothing's plugged in, especially not the included antennas, as they aren't exactly designed to carry the weight of a computer and you can easily forget them back there. Last but not least, you have the sliding locks on the left side panel, which are extremely easy to use, but unfortunately leave the panel with a fair amount of wiggle room. I would have liked to see even an optional thumb screw hole on just the side panel, just in case I didn't want my side panel to jiggle around. Despite the odd arrangement of screws and locking mechanisms on the back of the case, it is pretty awesome that you can take off the top, bottom, front, and both side panels very easily. This makes the expectedly cramped building area actually feel larger than it is, resulting in a much easier build in a more open space. One last thing before we go inside the case is the aesthetically pleasing little fan that they have on the back. To explain what I mean by aesthetically pleasing, usually if you were to mount a fan in this orientation and look at it from the outside, you would see the company logo, structure supporting bars, and power cabling for the fan. In this case, they have designed the fan specifically to be the other way around, so that it can maintain its good looks from the outside. Very nice touch. Upon taking off the side panels, you'll notice the side fan bracket, which has a funny note and a pretty intense warning message on it. First off, and I quote, Note, installing the side fan may increase the acoustic level. So essentially, installing a thing that creates a byproduct of noise may increase your noise level. Thanks. Secondly, and I quote, Warning! Hazardous moving parts. Keep fingers and other body parts away. I just... really? I don't know. 
In all seriousness though, this bracket is well implemented and will help you cool some of your more thermally demanding graphics cards and CPUs. But I would have liked to see MSI actually include a stock fan here. I can't imagine that a second fan would have really increased the bomb cost by all that much. And while I realize they only actually suggest it for an R9 series kind of graphics card, I know more than a few people out there that would install one just to keep their system that much cooler in general. On the right hand side you'll see a mounting bracket that holds the slimline optical drive bay and three and a half inch bay. This mounting bracket will have to be unscrewed and removed in order to install something into that three and a half inch bay. And another note is that on this side, if you for some reason want to replace your PSU, you can take it out by removing all of the screws and lowering its whole mounting bracket. And for some of you out there that want to be rather adventurous, it is possible then to swap in a modular PSU. But you'll have a fair amount of metal cutting in your future and you'll be voiding your warranty. Up in the top, we have our dual two and a half inch bay, which comes pre-installed with a nifty little MSATA device. Now, I don't honestly see a ton of people using this dual MSATA device, but some people might use it, and regardless, it's a cool little additional feature anyways. And once you're done with this case, it is removable, so you can take it out and take it with you. A nice little additional value. The drive rails are pretty secure, and when you push them in, they click in really nicely. They're not just gonna randomly slide out on you, so pretty solid overall. Jumping behind the motherboard tray for a second, we can see that there's a fan filter for the PSU on the left-hand side, which is quite nice, and an utter lack of any cable management options whatsoever. So what exactly do you do for cable management? Not much. But because you don't have to, which is not that bad, almost every cable you'll need is pre-ran for you with plastic clips holding them in place, and the cables aren't exactly out of sight, but they're also quite well taken care of, and easy to access if you need to, routing themselves tightly around various devices within the case so they're not in your way while you're working. Thanks to the very large size grill on the bottom of the case and the elevation from the handle, the graphics card is able to breathe quite easily. Also, if you're worried about your GPU when carrying the case around with the handle, you can rest a wee bit easier because MSI has included a GPU supporter, which is essentially an adjustable plastic bracket that will keep your GPU from sagging down too much. Back inside the case, we can see the NH-L12 Noctua cooler that I installed. It fits perfectly in this case, and I would highly suggest it if you do decide to go with the Nightblade in the future. This cooler is quite large and includes two fans and still allows you to access things like SATA ports, just in case you want to make changes to the computer at some later date. Speaking of the NH-L12, I have two questions for you guys. Would you like me to review the NH-L12, comparing it versus a stock cooler in the Nightblade and against other performance coolers in my standard, standard cooling bench, and also, are you interested in barebone systems at all? Or are you kind of the person that wants to build everything from scratch? Let me know in the comments down below and on the forum. I'll see you guys in either of those locations. If you're on the forum and you want to get rid of the ads, become a contributor, it gets rid of all of them. Again, if you don't like my shirt or your shirt or your friend's shirt, I added another person this time, you can check out the link in the description down below the video where you can buy any of our shirts. While you're down there, go to the support us link and change your bookmarks for Amazon to our affiliate code. Like, dislike, favorite, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you guys next time.